If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this motherfucking episode of Mind Pump. <laughs> Whoa, coming in hot, everybody. Uh, we have a great time uh, having talking, bullshitting for about 33 minutes. We talk about Selena, uh, the great musician and artist that Adam <laughs> that nobody knows. did not fucking know about. Nope, uh, I can't nope. even believe he calls himself Mexican. Um, we <laughs> we talk just about, revoked his Mexican We card. talk about Justin's sunburn from no sun exposure. <laughs> yes, that's right. Literally, I'm white. Literally, uh, sunlight reflects off the ground and gives him a sunburn. Mm. We talk about transitioning from being a crappy trainer. And those of us that still haven't transitioned. To a good trainer. <laughs> yeah. We talk about our bulking stories. You're not going to want to miss that. Uh, it's actually painful mm. um split brain patience that's kind of cool and skewed body perception that's actually a pretty cool part of that that beginning part of the episode then we get into the questions the first question is what do we think about these hybrid athletes so we're mixing bodybuilding with endurance events like triathlons can you be successful at both of them or is it stupid exactly mm. then we talk about uh what we envy most about each other for example uh justin's Pale, beautiful white skin. You love it. Love it. Yeah. Uh, then we talk about how uh, when voice. we have when we have guests on the fucker, when we have guests on the show, how open minded do we have to be? Basically, how cool are we with our guests? Because sometimes we disagree, or most of the time we disagree with some of the stuff that our guests uh, say. And then finally, in true mind pump fashion, we give our opinion on something we have zero expertise in. I love doing that. <laughs> we predict the McGregor. Mayweather fight, which is coming up. That's right. Get and your bets in. I'll be honest. It's pretty good. Finally, there's only two days left for our discounted price on our new program, MAPS Prime Pro. This is a truly correctional program that covers the wrists, the neck, the lumbar spine, the hips, the ankles, and the toes. It actually goes in and breaks those areas down and shows you correctional movements to give you better recruitment patterns, to alleviate pain. Uh, if you're a personal trainer or someone in the industry uh, where you're treating patients or helping people deal with pain or even just get in better shape, Prime Pro is a very valuable tool. Now, the regular price uh, when all is going to be said and done is $167. Well, right now, it's discounted because we just launched it. Um, and that sale is going to end in two days. So if you're interested in the program, now's the time to get it. The place to get it is mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time. Yeah. Give away them T-shirts. How many uh, reviews, Douglas? Fold them and throw them. 26 reviews. Oh, oh wow. you know why? You know why? I you know why? It. I love it. I told people how to leave reviews again. People, exactly. It's, it's such a pain in the ass to leave reviews well, on iTunes. You know who did something I thought that was pretty clever that we should all do at one point is I saw Connor do this. So kudos to our boy Connor who actually, uh, he did it on his- His podcast is Pleasure Monkey. Did yeah, he, shout, did out. He yeah shout out to our with and it. Also, shout out to our buddy, uh, Kyle Kingsbury, who just released the Mind Pump episode on his podcast, Current Space. So those of you guys that just are not getting enough Mind Pump, five days a week and one YouTube a day is not enough for you. Mm -hmm. You can head over to Current Space and listen to us on there, or you can head over to podcast or uh, Pleasure Monkey and hear us there. But what Connor did was he actually put it on his Insta story uh, each- you know, go to the review, click, which you basically step people through talking. Mm. He showed it visually on his phone. I thought that was pretty clever. Mm. There I you see. go. So 20 something view reviews. It means we're giving away how many shirts? Seven shirts. Damn. Holy shit. We're a lot go. of shirts. This Brianna's week. going to be pissed. Yeah. Well, too bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. I'm going to read these off. N Nishime, Megan J fit Marshall, four, five, five, Mikey buns, 33 <laughs> sleepless buns. in sack. Tommy Roback and L Wetback. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I do, I'm just reading this these. Okay, for you sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Please send a message to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include the name I just read as well as your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Yo yo Stop. yo! Don't trip, chocolate chip. Adam always. He always Selena is in the motherfucking house. We're going. We're going straight. <laughs> we're going straight gangster today. <laughs> I'm Selena. So, yeah. Selena's hold in on. the motherfucking. <laughs> hold, hold on, I, have to, I have to like hold my headphone yeah. on one side yeah. and close my eyes. Like, yeah. Should we just bark? Como la flor. <laughs> Tantamo. I can't do the Selena song. Sorry. Right. You guys don't know Selena. 
I did. Wow. You guys don't know Selena? I didn't until now. No. Bitty bitty bum bum. You guys don't know her fucking Spanish music? I don't. I actually. can't say that I'm a uh, Selena, follower. Selena. So you know how J Lo got famous for having a big butt? Yeah. Selena was the. She was the originator of that whole thing. Hmm. She had a massive uh, gluteal area. I don't shake think- a bomb, bomb, shake a bomb, bomb. I no. thought, I thought, yeah, was, I thought J-Lo was, uh, came before Selena Gomez. <laughs> Not Selena Go- Gomez? Who are you thinking of? Fuck, Adam. God. Selena who? This is the God first damn it. one. You call yourself Mexican, you don't even know who Selena is? <laughs> no, I don't. That's why I'm asking. Selena. It's it. That's all her name is. Oh, Selena. The original it, Selena. She just has Selena? Like yes, Madonna. Like Madonna? Did yeah. you watch- Prince? The, did, yeah. Yes, dude. Did, Prince, Madonna, and Selena. I don't know Selena. Selena was, she was American, uh, but she was a his, uh, Mexican, um, and she sang song in- Are you thinking of Shakira? No. That's Colombian. Yeah. You Fuck. I don't know. So, I, don't know so. I don't know why I'm so offended right now. Oh, Doug, we're gonna need your Google help real soon here because I, I don't know who the. Up. I don't know. Do you remember? Okay, J Lo played her in the movie Selena. Remember? I've heard is Selena. Yeah. Of course you have, dude. Yeah. Fuck me. No. Well, there's a then there's a couple popular English songs that she sang that were pop on the charts when we were kids. Yeah. Uh, God, what's the fuck? Is I can't she, remember. I can only remember her Spanish song because I loved her did Spanish she die? songs. Die? Is that what happened? Her one of her like employees or whatever promoters. Killed fucking her? killed her, dude. That's what? right. Yeah, she was a young girl, sweet girl. She was super popular among the Hispanic community, um, and then she sang some uh, songs in English, and it fucking hit the charts, man. The top of the charts. She was fucking amazing when we were kids. I can't believe you. Know, there she is. I, uh, I literally can't. That's the movie on her. I can't like point out any one of her songs though. Like uh, I've heard of her, but I don't know. I'm any so angry of it. because I can only think of her Spanish songs. Uh. That's what I was just singing right now. There she is. So Selena is originally who made Big Butts cool before J-Lo is what you're saying. I think Big Butts have been cool for a long time. Yeah. I think there's a long history of coolness mm. with Big Butts. But Selena was the Do big... you think so? Yeah. I believe there was a- I thought it was Sir Mix-a-Lot. I, I would definitely- that's a good point. That's a very- That's a good point. He definitely played, he definitely played a role in that. He did like Big Butts. Yeah, he and he was quite honest. And he didn't lie. lie. He was very honest he about can't. it. It's such a bad dad joke. Yeah, really what? Bad. <laughs> no, no, dude. Selena's the fucking shit. I'm gonna find a song. He was honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you like that? Uh, such a bad dad on, joke. You like I love such it. A bad yeah. Hold on. Hold wait, on. wait, Sal. When are we gonna have that that game show where like me and you have like the dad joke off? Here's here's one of my favorite songs of hers. I want that this to is, happen. It's in Spanish though. Oh man, listen to that All shit. Right. This gets me in a mood. Wow, yeah, I didn't even. I grew up in San Jose, motherfucker. I heard this yeah. shit all the time. Oh, uh, that's good stuff right there. That's right. Hold on, I gotta hear did the she, lyrics. Did first. she sing? Quiet. Mm. God damn it. You know what? That's now, some shit right there. Now dude. that you say this, I remember this actually. Getting my super burrito from La Taqueria. <laughs> I do remember <laughs> hearing this. In the background. Yeah, I do remember hearing this in the background. <laughs> many, many La Taquerias. Yeah, I was uh, at the flea market. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> now here's her. You guys, you guys are fucking racist. I'm Mexican. No, I'm not. I'm, so, I'm Mexican. That's literally what happened. I mean, so just, racist. Well, Justin's white as hell. He's racist. Oh, <laughs> just, just by default, I guess. You huh? have to be. Oh man. No, I'm just kidding. You're not. But listen, this is. So here's her her famous English song. I know you remember this shit because I guarantee you made out to some girl to the song. Maybe not Adam because he was fucking scared of girls, but remember this song right here? Yeah. Watch. It's very nice, bro. Here it comes. This is like the first slow dance I ever did. Ooh, right next to you. That's right. Watch. Hold on. Here it comes. Wait, wait. Oh, I do remember. this shit? I got fresh with a couple girls to this one. Whoa. I do it. Back, real, real fresh. Back when freaking uh, was a you, thing. You right? got real fresh. Yeah. Shut up, dude. You were yeah. a virgin until you were like twenty-five. Yeah, no, I, fresh. He was bro. into heavy petting. Heavy, he was, heavy he dry home petter. He was the finger blaster yeah. champion finger of, blaster. of school. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, a lot of dry humping to that song. <laughs> a lot of, call him quick draw. Yeah, touch finger it, blast. Touch <laughs> it through, <laughs> touch it through my jeans. Ooh. <laughs> So wrong. The power drill. <laughs> he's, like, he's like 19. He's hey, still getting dry. Justin, what, what what the fuck happened yeah. to your face, bro? <laughs> I got sunburned, man. <laughs> I got like lobstered out. You know what's funny yeah. about this? We were oh, with, I need, to, I need to let the audience know Call what happened. Out. We were with, uh, all of us together, were, we met with Dr. Ruscio up in uh, Sausalito and a gorgeous uh, location. 
And Justin literally, I'm not even exaggerating, stayed in the shade the entire time. <laughs> he got he got sunburn that on his face. Inaccurate. He got sunburn in his face from the small amount of radiation that reflects off of objects, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize someone could be that sensitive to no, the sun. No, it's not how it went down. Okay. You can't I, tell I me. I wore was... a hat for a reason. So I walked outside. I didn't have a hat on. I was like, oh, my hair. I just got a haircut. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> you know, I'm going to rock it today. And we walked like, I don't know, like it had to be at least a mile. You yeah. Know? Like but... by the time we're done, it was all in the sun. I, so it was a but, but that's crazy. A one, a half a mile to lunch, a half a mile back. Sunburn. Yeah. You're fucking sunburn. 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 Yeah. I never thought it was. Bro, I hasn't seen the light in a while. You know, I got to introduce it. I have to like, I'd have to sit on top of the sun for that to happen. For I me. would have to wear baby oil. <laughs> that's what <laughs> I would well, have You to, tan bastards. I would have to lather up yeah, with baby oil to get that ready yeah, from that exactly. little bit of exposure. All of us are, are like, are like that. Okay. So do you, Justin, do you get any type of uh, like uh, beneficial? adaptation from the sun or is it all damaged like from the no it just takes like a lot of like really slow incremental like exposure okay so like okay so here's what you're doing like i I need to paint i need to understand this it's oh it's sunny outside what are we gonna do this is what justin does let me maybe i'm wrong i don't know you stand in front of the the window but the the, but the blinds are closed and you get the little twisty thing that opens the blinds and then you 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 open the blind long enough it's long enough you open the blind and close them real quick and then you do that every day and then i have to drink blood just just to make sure that i'm alive he's an he's an irish vampire i'm an irish vampire oh man yeah that's good dude. good time yesterday we met uh anthony Gunders? No, Anthony. Jesselnick? No. No, Anthony. Anthony. Fuck, man. Yeah. I don't he, know. he probably doesn't listen. I don't remember his name. <laughs> he's a big fan, he's a bunch dude. Of dicks. No, he's not. You're an asshole. He is. Nah, he was. Uh, I liked him, though. Chiropractor. Another. I have ran into more smart chiropractors yeah. in the last year than I have my, my previous 15 years in the industry. Crazy to me. Yeah, maybe maybe it's. Do you, uh, do you guys not it's agree? Interesting. Yeah, we're, we're, we seem to be like like magnets for these smart chiropractors. Yeah, I think. Uh, don't they talk about this in the secret? Yeah, we're attracted. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, we threw it out there. I'm like, why are all these why are all these yeah, like handsome, good looking people like are coming around me all of a sudden? Hmm. Mm, I'm yeah. attracting it. Yeah. No, I think it's because of our uh, our podcast that we're meeting uh, people who are you know. Like-minded? Yeah, probably. Not even just like-minded. I think uh, it's not even necessarily the like-mindedness. It's just a a lot of these chiropractors that we've met lately are forward-thinking and just doing what works, Mm. which is movement. You know, lots of movement. Uh, These guys are becoming movement specialists rather than adjustment specialists. You know what I'm saying? So the self-aware side of me says, (laughs) what What if I was attracting all the dumb chiropractors because I was a dumb trainer? And that's why I'll haul oh. And now that we've elevated oh, man. to. Why are you going to make me think? <laughs> <laughs> right? All maybe, those idiots I ran into. Maybe it was all my the, fault. Maybe, exactly. Maybe all the bad chiropractors prey on all the bad trainers you know, that, don't, not, that don't know any better. That's not a bad point because right. if, if you think about like how dumb you were back in the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. That's it. Thank you. No, not just you. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you in particular, but definitely other people. Now. <laughs> so he's I'm not going to include himself kidding. in he's this. He's like though, you, you and know. Justin, like right? you and <laughs> you guys, right? Like, I was a bad yeah. trainer for a couple weeks when I first started. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, if you think about it, honestly, like you go back ten years, ten years or fifteen years ago. Well, well for me, fifteen because I started before you guys. But ten years ago, even a lot of the shit that I said and did was wrong. Well, I was just going to ask you if yeah. we're if we're being completely honest with ourselves. When would you say? When did you really feel like? you were a really good trainer or you felt like you were really truly making a difference in helping people? When did you feel that? Did you have a moment where you went, fuck, I I think I'm really breaking through here? So both you and Justin were trainers much longer than I was because I started as a personal trainer. I quickly got into sales, uh, uh, managing trainers for a short period of time. So I was a fitness manager for I don't know, I think four months. And then I went to sales and then I became a general manager. So I did a lot of, um, and my passion was, I mean, fitness has always been my passion. And I, I always considered myself a trainer first, manager second, only because I loved fitness from from that particular standpoint, which is, I think, one of the reasons why I was, I was effective with the trainers that work for me. But uh, I trained trainers for a long period of time. I didn't train clients. Then when I uh, sold, uh, excuse me, left 
corporate fitness or whatever, the big box gyms. Then I bought my wellness facility, and that's when I became a, uh, a personal trainer and, and really did that for a long time. And I'll, I, I'd say probably I, I wouldn't consider myself like good until maybe eight, maybe 10 years ago, 8 to 10 years ago, where I was starting to get uh, really good uh, at personal training. But it wasn't uh, – it was really a product of the people I surrounded myself with. Luckily, I was uh, – because I own that facility – and I kind of had this vision of having a facility with all these different modalities uh, of people with different uh, viewpoints. Uh, kind of by accident is I knew to build a business, if I did that, that would be more successful. So I, even though I disagreed with the people that worked in my gym half the time, I was open-minded enough and, and uh, you know welcoming enough to accept them in. So I had like, I had this physical therapist who was also a holistic life coach and did gut testing and food intolerance testing. Then I had a massage therapist that was totally into like the spiritual side of things. And when I first met them, I was like, you guys are cool, great people. You guys have good intentions, lots of stay integrity. Stay on your side. I'll stay on my side. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't believe half the shit you're saying, but whatever. <laughs> but you know what? Because I worked with them and I kind of respected them little by little, I started kind of learning from them. And that's when I became a better trainer. I don't know if I would have necessarily advanced had I not been uh, surrounded by them, I mean, look how fast we've advanced with Mind Pump because of all the people we've been exposed to. Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you think was the most? Uh, <clears throat> you know, we talk about our paradigm being shattered. What do you think was the hardest thing for you to break? Like, I know we talk about small meals, we talk about protein, we talk about mm-hmm. all these things. For me, like personally, for example, <clears throat> I did not try and lean out right mm. until I was twenty eight or twenty nine years old. So I spent. 29 years on the bulk literally <laughs> like yeah, literally right. like literally spent 29 years bulking never once did i really truly go on a uh, longer than a couple weeks of calorie restricting and dieting to lean out because i was so insecure about being small skinny that i would i would rather be looked at as bigger thicker with a little bit of fat than uh small and mm. lean and potentially ripped. So Dude, the- let me ask you, when you were a kid, especially when you were a teenager, did it like hurt you uh on the inside when people say say things like you're skinny? Oh yeah, I hated that. Being Oh, it's the fucking kill Being me. called skinny uh for me is, is up what was up there with uh some of the, the biggest ways you could insult me right especially when i was training like if I, once i was working towards it and i was working a way to, to try and build muscle to call me skinny or small or little or lean like i had that complex for sure but i didn't realize uh how important it would be for me to to actually go on a uh leaning out process uh, for my overall journey, and it took me a very, very long time to break through those insecurities. I mean, I was the kid when I was younger. I remember I went through a phase of the like the triple shirts. Did you ever go through that? Where I wore a wife beater, a t shirt, then another t shirt. Oh man! And it's when like I junior high, yeah. yeah like, and when I think about it, what? Why would you do that as a kid? You were doing that to look mm-hmm. fuller, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. To look fuller, to look bigger. Like there's, there, it serves no other purpose to wear fucking three t shirts. You know, it's and absurd. Let me ask. So here's a, here's uh, this is and interesting you're a tank now top too for basketball, and you get like little stick arms, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. You know, here's something else that's for so when. I was lifting weights and I started lifting it like, you know, like I said, like consistently 13, 14 years old. A lot of the guys that I knew, the friends of mine that I knew that lifted weights did it because they wanted the attention of girls. I did not lift weights for girls at all. I lifted weights because I wanted other guys to think that I was stronger and bigger. I could give a shit about, I already, I always had attention from girls. That was never a problem for me because I had a, you know, Ladies, I, I, can, man. I can talk. And I always I realized at an early age that if I to me. I could talk like talking was was pretty effective at, at getting girls' attention. Like, Hello, and it was like Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh, it's sh- that Kermit voice. Yeah. It, <laughs> yes, it's- it was uh, no, it was because I, I felt this is like so I needed crazy. To be bigger, I've been right? masturbating to Sesame Street for so many years. <laughs> oh wow, that's horrible. Can I easy being green? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what it, that's why I lift the weights. It was just to be. Like you said, big and size. I couldn't give a shit about a six pack. I don't want abs. Yeah, I just want to be big. Yeah, you know, that's I want to be heavy. I, I would rather Get be big or die. I I would much rather, which is also, uh, 
I mean, I remember I would see the scale go down. Like if I just laid off the throttle for a day or two, you know, if I, and that would freak me out. Like, oh my God, I lost three pounds last night. Like I got to eat. <laughs> and I couldn't get, I really, if I was training, I couldn't get fat. It was just, you know, it was a thicker you know, than I was when I than I, when I wasn't paying attention to it as much. I don't, okay, so what's the what's like the fattest you achieved? Do you think? Well, Besides when you were not working out and stuff. So the, I'm talking about when you were actively lifting and bulking. So the irony, right, is if it and it was like a total blessing in disguise for me to move over into the cannabis industry for a couple of years because I became uh, heavily. I've, I've always been money motivated, but at this point in my life, I made a decision on. I'm going to do something uh, purely for the money. I have no real passion for it, desire for it, but I see the potential and the amount of money that I can make, and I'm going to bury myself in it. Like That was the mentality. So I was eating Jack in the Box and Quiznos sandwiches and ice cream and whatever the fuck that I always ate before, but I wasn't training nowhere near as what I was. And now I was no longer training clients 8 to 12 hours a day I was sitting behind a desk, and you finally, and you were older, and I'm old, and I'm 30 years old now at this time, so 29, going on 30, and for the first time in my life, and I'll never, I, this moment is extremely vivid to me. I remember laying in bed next to Katrina, and I was scratching my side as I was laying on my <laughs> side, and I actually felt my belly. I actually felt I've never yeah, it was hanging off. To yeah, the, the it side. was to the side. Like I could actually, <laughs> and it wasn't like major. I didn't have like a huge gut that hung over my over my. You didn't get a dick do. No, I didn't. I didn't you know have a dick do. No, I didn't have that. That's where your stomach sticks out more than your dick do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> so my coach said that one time. <laughs> I, <laughs> but I had never felt that. He was great. I had never felt that, and I never. It, the crazy part is when I looked at myself in the mirror, I didn't think I didn't see that. No, because you're so skewed yes, towards the other way. I was so skewed with being small that I was actually like, "Fuck yeah, I'm like, I'm over 200 pounds." I was, I had such a hard time being over 200 pounds that even though I was fat and over 200 pounds, you were cool with it. I was more yeah. cool with it than I would have been if I was 175 pounds and lean and ripped. How crazy is that? And the only thing that that changed that thought process for me was I felt the fat. Like, because I felt it weird, and I was like, oh, that doesn't feel, my stomach shouldn't hang to the side like that. I had to, like, really look at myself objectively and go, wow, I could probably lose some fat for once in my life. And that's what made me go, okay, I'm going to go on this transformation journey, and I'm going to start cutting. And that just, that changed so much for me. Yeah, for me, it was, uh, I was managing uh, the 24-hour in Santa Teresa, and I had uh, DJ Densmore. Yeah, was DJ. my you guys know DJ yeah fucking great guy he was my AGM he had moved over from the fitness manager position and then Ryan DeVita who you guys met the other day was my fitness manager and the three of us were like buddies right we were boys and of course when you're a general manager of your club those are those are kind of like your right and left hand person right your fitness manager and your assistant manager and you work with other leaders in your gym but those tend to be your your closest people so the three of us ended up started. We started to lift weights together, and we're all pretty big, strong dudes. Uh, Ryan definitely uh, the most genetically gifted in that department in terms of size. And we were in my office one day, and we were talking about how who can gain the most size. And so I said, "Hey, let's do let's fucking do a contest. Let's see who can gain the most weight." And I don't remember what the time period, the time frame was, but let's just see who can gain the most weight. Like any weight, it doesn't even matter. While we're lifting, we can work out together. And we're just gonna fucking gain weight. So it was it was horrible, dude. If I look back at what we would do, like there's a Pizza Hut uh, down the way from the 24 Fitness in Santa Teresa that had an all you can eat lunch period. The buffet. You, okay, I don't know if you guys ever went there for that because I know you guys worked at Santa mm. Teresa too. So I oh, we went to that teriyaki bowl place. Yeah, oh, dude, every day, dude. I'd go there and I. would destroy probably a large or more pizza then there was a kfc right over there a bucket of chicken there was a mcdonald's right there they had 99 cents uh, cheeseburgers and i'd order like ten dollars worth it's like 10 cheeseburgers <laughs> and we would smash them and i would destroy them and then it became a contest to who can eat more and i you know you guys know me right you guys know that if i get competitive the thing that i love most about competition isn't necessarily the who's gonna win that's cool too 
But it's the while we're competing, it's the shit talk and the psychological part piece, that, <laughs> and it makes me laugh. I love it. Yeah. So I would literally, I'd have a bucket of chicken in my office, and I'd I'd page them through the intercom, like attention, twenty four fitness, you know, staff, you know, Ryan and DJ to Sal's office. They come in and be like, I'm eating my fucking chicken right now. What are you guys doing? So I'd fuck with them about it, right? So we would do this back and forth. Then I drink weight gainers with my food to wash things down. <laughs> I so remember doing the same thing. I shit, got my right? body weight. And remember, I'm a six foot guy. I don't have like a big bone structure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm relatively narrow. I'm probably, I'm definitely more ectomorph than anything. Bird like, yeah. I got, <laughs> I got my, uh, I got my, uh, my body weight up to like 238 pounds or something. Like, I got 190 right now, right? I remember when you were that massive because we were, <laughs> so you, you, when we ran into each other, when we saw each other years later, it was, I thought you were like half the person that you were. Like, you, I was like, I remember Sal being like bigger than me. Like, I remember, and I remember when we saw it, when I came over to your studio abs, uh, when, uh, when I came with uh, Larry, Larry yeah. and I had seen you for the first time in years since we'd worked together. And I remember looking at, and you were ripped, you were lean, but you were way smaller. I was like, dude, though, I remembered you as big Sal, where your arms were like bursting out of your fucking, out of your polo. <laughs> dude, shirt, I was, I, I got 230. Just massive. Just beefcake. I got, we got yeah. so, all of us got real heavy. Ryan got up to 245. I got up to 238. DJ got up to 220. And what really was this was the scary part now up until this point i didn't give a shit i was like i'm just getting big and i was strong i got really strong too and i can get strong if i stuff myself with food but uh I, who was it it was like one of our other trainers who was kind of making fun of us how how like fat and heavy we were and she goes let's see you guys get on the stationary bike right now making fun of us so i'm like that's fucking who cares right i got on the stationary bike and <laughs> within start wheezing within 5 minutes dude Within five minutes, I started getting out of breath. You know, I'm like a 30-year-old, not even 30. I was probably 20-something-year-old <laughs> dude, and I got out of breath within five minutes on the, on the stationary bike. Yeah, and I remember the, thinking like, oh, no, that was the big, what have I done? That was the big yeah, indicator yeah. for me when I did the same thing. I was, I was bulking up so aggressively, and I got up to about 2.35 uh, in the morning, right, naked first thing. Like I was, And then I would push beyond 240 in the day. Because when you're that big, when you're 230. Oh, you can stuff your food. Oh, you're you're fluctuating ten plus pounds a day. Yeah, like you're yeah. e you're you're consuming ten pounds of food and water. Yeah, you have ten pound poops. Right. So, <laughs> so it's I re a baby. I remember teaching at that time. I had boot camps, and it was pretty pretty common for me to run a lap with the ladies and warm up and then stretch them <laughs> out and like you know that was kind of like what I did right. And most of them are like. 55 plus years old so I, I should be able to smoke most of them around the track and i would now at this time i had kind of stopped doing that and they all knew why because i was bulking i was like oh i can't run you know because i don't want to burn any extra calories i need to make sure I'm <laughs> right and it was consuming that much was so one hard. lap yeah well i so i exactly <laughs> can't so do it i could couldn't do it just not doing it and just then you just walk around in a wheelchair all the time just yeah. so you know. and then after i had bulked just up lean on this post to the highest i'd ever been i decided okay now it's time to start leaning out and i remember the first lap i ran with them and I'll never forget inside just grimacing and trying not to let them see it. And like my shins were on fire. I was gasping for it. I thought, oh my God, this is one lap around the track. I can't believe I feel this way. And I remember getting, getting done and going, whoa. I talk about signs that you're pushing the body beyond where it wants to be. And uh, that forever has stuck with me. And and anytime I do, I start once. And for me, it's about 225. When I get beyond 225, I start to notice those signs. And, you know, I'm dealing with it again right now. It's really funny how, you know, I got up to 225 pretty quick. And now from here on out, it's a struggle for me to add weight and add size. And I start to notice all these little things. I notice my stool. I notice uh, just my stomach feeling full and bloated all the time. I feel my mobility starting to give a little bit. So, you know, I'm, I, I have a nice little battle going on right now uh, with, you know, how do I do Dude, this? I remember the first time I, I saw like pro bodybuilders. I went to the, like in person, I went to the Arnold Classic. Uh, convention or whatever, and I'm sitting there looking at these massive human beings, and we're sitting in this air conditioned auditorium, and they're just fucking signing autographs, and they are sweating like they're like they just did a shit ton of cardio, and I'm looking at them like, wow, yeah, why yeah. are they so tired? Like, and then we they would walk, and I'd see them, <sighs> yeah, 
And I was like, whoa. That's my roommate in college. He's like 6'8", like uh 360 pounds or Jesus. something that's yeah, massive he, he was just like an ogre yeah <laughs> like he would just eat like everything have you seen him lately have you, when's the last time you've seen yeah that he lost weight and then he was actually in my wedding i don't know if you remember but like i had like a bunch of big dudes oh yeah your wedding was my big, wedding how funny is this at justin's wedding justin looked like a little, I was little tiny kid. he looked like a little kid between his dad so mad. his brothers yeah. and like his fucking guys in his wedding i was like dude, dude like he's never back, looked so small before i'm so like mad at myself for doing that like <laughs> <laughs> i should have made them all stand in a hole <laughs> you know? and then like yeah but yeah like everybody was huge like i basically got like guys that were in a band with me and then like you know played football with whatever but uh yeah ed he's just humongous he had the same thing he, we would go anywhere and he just start like sweating profusely you know Ugh. and that's when i was like i was on the biggest i ever was when i was like 240 45 i think uh when i was trying to gain for to to be inside backer you know and i was trying to put on all the size and he would take me to all these buffets and all this shit like and oh my god we'd stack plates and it was just competitive that way because it was like you got to gain you got to gain here <clears throat> shoving like shakes uh down my throat and then we're eating stacking plates it was miserable dude, dude you know, I, I, I used to i would lift uh weights and then there's that hometown buffet that's not that yeah, far from the yeah. Hillsdale. I, I crushed some of those, yeah. And I'd lift, and then I'd go to Hometown Buffet, and so you want to talk about disgusting. You want to talk about lifting to failure? Uh, I used to eat to failure. Yeah, like I'd go to Hometown uh, Buffet, yeah. and it was like, I'm gonna push beyond the point of like, well, I'm it's, not like a, it's literally training to do that to get that size, bro. I would fight back puking. <clears throat> so I the, would fight back the fa- like the urge to throw up because I ate so much. Like, so how the, bad is that? The irony in all this is, you know, it's the same thing on the other side too. So. You know, we're we're expressing what it was like being skinny guys with a complex of you know being little and trying so hard to be big. I find that when I had clients that had been heavy their whole life or overweight, they're doing all the other extremes: starving the body, yep, yep. training, super running cardio, super hard, doing everything they can. And it's pretty crazy how uh, you know the grass is always greener on the other side, or mm. how we always tend to gravitate towards this this these habits and that tend to be bad for us and you know i those people are scared to death to like lift some heavy ass weight or fuel the body with some extra nutrients that maybe they don't actually like they would benefit a lot from like some serious heavy training because how quick their body would probably put some mass and size on which in turn would end up speeding their metabolism just, up. You, but they're scared to death to do that right when i when i talk to people now about I have a nut- best friend like that's crazy yeah. when i talk to people now about nutrition stuff I I really try to relate to them by remembering what it was like to be in my own body mm-hmm. during that period of time where you are literally here's here, okay so last night <clears throat> me and uh, me and my girlfriend are discussing just how um, insidious our own consciousness is and how uh, unaware we are of certain things and like like I said like when I was in that state of mind I was so unconscious of my distorted perception of myself. And it's interesting. Uh, we, I actually pulled up on YouTube. If you guys ever want to trip out over some crazy experiments, look up uh, the split brain experiments or split brain patients. These are people who had unt- uh, intractable epilepsy. And one of the, one of the uh, surgical procedures to save them was to sever the corpus callosum, which is the, the bundle of nerves that connects the right and left hemisphere. So they'll sever that part of the brain. So now the right and left side of the hemisphere don't communicate with each other. And otherwise, they're healthy. They can function normally in in society. But then they'll do these interesting experiments where they will show the person a a picture in the the right field of vision. And I'm not sure if I have the right right side here, but you get the idea. They'll show them a picture of like a car and the right side of their, like to their right eye. Mm. And they'll ask them, do you see anything? And the person will say, no, I don't see anything because the left side of the brain is the one that processes language. So like, no, I don't see anything. And then they'll say, okay, close your eyes and with your left hand, draw a picture and they'll draw a car. And then they'll, then they'll open their eyes and be like, what is that? And they'll be like, oh, that's a car. And they'll be like, why did you draw that? Draw that? And they'll be like, I don't know. Like they're so unaware. Wow. They're so unaware that their brain is operating this way that, and they're so fooled. It would be like me telling you right now that, you know, the three of us were on the moon yesterday and you'd be like, no, we weren't like you totally... <laughs> You're so fucking unaware. That's messed up, man. But but this is what happens to us when we have these horrible perceptions of our own this body image issues mm. that we 
force ourselves to do these horrible things to ourselves, which is totally illogical. Mm -hmm. It's like you couldn't rationalize to me. If you went back, if I went back in time and talked to myself and I sat myself down and said, hey, Sal, check this out. Here's what you're doing to your body and why it's not helping you. I wouldn't be able to rationalize myself. No, no. I was so deep in it. Well, that it's I just like I, what I said when I'm, I was looking at myself in the mirror and I did not see a fat guy. I did not see that. So weird. Yeah. I, and it took the physical feedback for it to for me to actually start to connect those dots. I mean, it, it, it blew me away that I didn't watch that or see that coming. And now when I look back at pictures and I compare and contrast, I'm like, wow, it's so crazy how we let the, these insecurities that are rooted from like our childhood carry over into what dictates how we treat our bodies going forward. And it's on both sides. So like I said, we're talking about people that... It's the same thing. It's just yeah. different, but it's the same thing. How many times have you guys had a female client that will uh, you know, bring a picture from when they were younger? I, yeah. I, this is my favorite thing to do, by the way. Yeah, I'll have a female client who talk about how... They want to lose weight and whatever. And some of them will bring me a picture and be like, this is back. The before, glory days. Yeah, this is back before I had kids. Look how amazing I looked. I want to look like this uh, now again. And then I'll ask them, I'll say, if we went back in time to that point, how did you feel about your body then? They're like, oh, I thought I was so fat. And I wait for them to fucking make that connection. Like <laughs> yeah. at that time, you thought you were so Old. fat. Old. And now you're looking at it and saying, yeah. that's what I want to look like. And it's like, this is this is what's, you're, you're, you're still in this state. You're in the mm. state where you're, perception of yourself is so distorted and so not based on any reality that we need to fix that before we use that as a as a motive as a, mo a motivator mm -hmm. for your fitness and nutrition and because that's it's so wrong and you first have to connect that before you then start talking about all the other things mm -hmm. right before you start talking about what is best for your body i mean try taking somebody who has that issue right and then you tell them okay this is also why later on I evolved as a trainer and realized I had to make people commit for three months with me because then I take someone like that client that you're explaining right now and this girl who is 50, 60 pounds overweight and just wants to be the smaller version of herself that she was five, 10 years ago. And I tell her we need to lift some heavy ass weight and we need to feed the body. And God forbid yeah. she adds three pounds to the scale after she paid all this money to mm. see me. How fucking terrible of a trainer am I? But really it's what she needed, right? Because she'd been starving her body for the last you know, year on in nutritionally or maybe longer, not training correctly. If she did train, it was all this circuit based, high intensity, no rest periods because she's punishing herself, hammering away, sweating her ass off. When it's like, really, what we need to do is back off a little bit, feed your body, strength train, build some good lean body mass. But try telling that to somebody who has an issue with or a complex of being fat or big and all they want to be is smaller and they actually see the scale go up. That is probably the greatest challenge for a good trainer or a good fitness That's the challenge. Yeah, to help somebody and to get through their head. So I tell you right now, if you're a listener and you have struggled with that, which most of us do, whether, whether you're on the I'm too skinny side or I'm too fat side, you know, we have this... Uh, perception of ourself that is completely disordered that's driven by insecurities that are probably deeply rooted to when we were, we were children and they still will always surface and they'll show themselves in different ways you once become once you become aware of that this journey becomes a lot easier because then you can start applying what what you're learning as far as the science behind how you should train and how you should eat and separate start making the right decisions yes mm -hmm. right the bird <laughs> Chimera Quaz! Today's Quaz is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off! It's the motherfucking Quaz! The eagle has landed! Quee all right, the first question is from Eric Barnes 51. What do you think about these new hybrid athletes that mix bodybuilding with endurance events like triathlons? Can you be successful at both? So, two what? questions here. What, what yeah, what, what, is, what is this? What is this? Um, like Spartan I, are we talking about? Or? Well, no, I think they're just referring to and I, I'm not familiar with I don't I don't necessarily see this trend, but they're talking about you know, people who are like trying to build muscle mass, but then also want maximum endurance and they're competing in, like you said, uh, or like she said, triathlons. But the second question is, because the first question is, what do I think about it? And this, or what do we think about it? And the second question is, can you be successful in both? 
So question number one, what do I think about it? I think it's fucking awesome. Do whatever you want to do. If you right. want to combine different modalities mm-hmm. and you've got smart programming, <clears throat> um, then, then all the power to you. Can you be successful at both? No, probably not. Be- because you can be. Uh, you what can't, you, what do you, okay, define well, successful. Well, yeah, okay, so that we have to. Like, def- are you going to win bodybuilding right, competitions we, we and have, win a trap? We have to. We have to define. But is it possible? Absolutely, it's possible. Is it likely that you are going to be in the uh, upper ten percent of each of those categories? That's less likely, right? That you're you could be a successful athlete and a successful bodybuilder and do a hybrid of the both and be fine, uh, but. It's they're they're conflicting modalities. You're asking your body to uh, to give to give you two adaptations that don't necessarily, especially when you're pushing those adaptations. What you won't be they and compete is, with is each it, other. You will, I have everything. You will most certainly yeah. not be able to be an endurance athlete, uh, the best endurance athlete, and the best bodybuilder at the same time. That's impossible. You'd have to be a genetic you, like freak of nature, and we haven't seen that yet. You won't be both. You they're so extreme. They're so different. Like. I think you could be a successful power lifter and bodybuilder, but they're they're closely yeah, related. That's more similar. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, because on the one end, I'm asking my body to build maximal muscle size, and on the other hand, I'm asking mm. my body to become extremely efficient, which doesn't benefit you running all day long, right? You know, in an endurance uh, challenge. So it's yeah, you're you're, you're Giving your body mixed signals. Now, so. I do believe you. What do they be- call it, Matt? Like a, a jack of all trades or master of none or something like that. Yeah, jack yeah. of all trades, ace of none. There you go. So what you could do, and I, I believe I'm in a position to do this right now, where I go on a kick, where I decided that uh, I'm this bodybuilding guy, work my way up, ah, become a pro. I'm good at it. I would consider myself uh, better than the average person at it. Uh, so I could say that I've had success, I'm doing air quotes right now, in bodybuilding. And now I decide I'm going to go on a journey to become great at uh, you know OCR and triathlons and endurance type stuff. I absolutely can start training my body that direction. To live in both uh, at the same time and and be successful at both at the same time is very unlikely you, you, and you know almost, what it reminds me of it reminds me of you know when you play video games dude the only person that can do this is Bo Jackson yeah. <laughs> well, that guy's the fucking man he did football and baseball yeah he can do anything yeah but that's, that's but, but I mean it's like one isn't going to take Bo away from no that's yeah. the, that's the, that was a very good joke yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you uh, but if you look Adam at got it, it yeah. reminds me of video games you know when you have to you pick an avatar like yes, a, like yes. a fighting game and they give you like fifty Always points my analogies they give you like fifty <laughs> points and you have yeah. to like use so many points for each attribute like, like strength speed or, yeah. yeah and you can't yeah. give all 50 to strength because if you do then you have none of the other ones and no. so you turn into dosh lom you yeah. know dosh lim dosh lim, <laughs> dosh lim. Dosh lim. Yeah. did you guys by the way did you guys know that they have uh here in san jose they have street fighter tournaments right now no where you pay i swear to god dude you pay 25 well, that's bucks all enter you pay 25 bucks and you can win like 500 oh yeah who's your guy <laughs> mine's guile i could beat you with any of them no any That's guy. That's a bold statement. You pick sir. the guy for me and I'll beat you at it. Mm. I'll beat you with Ihan. It's weird because I've beaten you at every video game we have here. It, you've never played a lot Street of Fighter confidence there. It's weird. Yeah, a lot a, of confidence weird, there. I'm the story. I was humbled. It's a this, weird confidence. I was humbled this weekend in the in the 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 Delta. I raced my brother in law, who has a little beer gut on him, and he's like a good eight inches shorter than me. Like and he running. Was, no, swimming. Oh, swimming. And uh, he was uh, talking a mad game, and I was like, dude, I'm not even going to get in there. I'll, I'll, I'm going to smoke you, and it's not even going to be fun. And, like, listen, I'm pretty fast in the pool. And I was just – I was talking the shit, dude. <laughs> talking the shit. I'm, like, looking at – I mean, my brother-in-law, I he's – I thought you a, almost beat, like, those college I, athletes. Right. What's wrong with you? So that, why do you think I was talking Come shit? On, I was talking mad shit. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to, like, turn around, look bad, and wink at him and stop yeah, yeah. halfway and then continue. Like, ah, um, did, did he does do a thing? No, 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 no. And, uh, in fact – and he punched me twice while we were swimming, and then so he did edge me out the last uh, the last minute there after he punched me. So he actually me. beat you. I like him. Kind of. What had happened was we were in, so the Del- anyone who's familiar with the Delta, it's a good pie to eat sometimes. Yeah, God, it was a, a little humble. Pie. No, it was humble, awful. What I will tell you is this: I, I mean, the competitive side of me, I was like, we will do this in a pool, just so you know. So like, I will not settle for <laughs> allowing. You after swam, all, you swam in the Delta. Oh Ooh. yeah, yeah, that, right. Yeah. And I always you, feel like I'm gonna like I don't yeah, know, like you, swim, you in, swim into swim into a condom. And let me tell you, let me tell you where this is a, a, a definite <laughs> advantage to somebody who. And here's where technique matters in a situation like this so my dumb ass 
thinks that be, forget the technique, forget all of that. I'm I'm gifted enough that I could pretty much beat most people that I talk shit to, right? or at least I thought. Well, my brother in law also was a competitive swimmer. Even though he's much smaller in frame, I definitely have the the uh, the better genetics for swimming and probably in a little bit better shape than he is right now. He still competitively hung with me and we were like bumping into each other i couldn't see under the water i'm like swallowing delta water i can't see oh. that. i don't know how to tilt my head oh very my well God. so like after he hit me twice you in the face Sal's i finally cleanse. i finally stopped but then i looked over and i'm like holy shit bro i cannot believe that i thought i was gonna get in front of you and then not even have to worry and then i could like uh, dog paddle how's, house. how's your uh oh, how's your gut right now swallowing that delta water are you okay <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know dude i don't know if that was that was or getting my getting beat by my brother-in-law was uh was worse I don't know which one. So mm. shout out to uh, to him for for his uh, swim his swim skills. Yeah, but you know to bring it all back to bring it all back, uh, you can compete in both and you can get better at both. But if you're, you're the the more specialized you are with your training, the better the results are for that particular specialization. The more generalized your training is. Uh, the less uh, you're going to get a particular attribute for a particular goal. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com, put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com, put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite, put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Callan M. Cooper. What do you envy most about each other and what steps do you take each day to gain that which you envy. Oh, that's a oh, that's a cool question. What do I envy. I don't like the word envy because uh, okay, yeah. I don't. I don't. I think I, respect or yeah, admi- admire is yeah, a better word. Because I don't I envy. See, I, yeah. I try not to envy people. I'm sure I do at some point, but I tr- I I try to envy people because then it's a that's a bad feeling. That's jealousy. That's um, it's a negative thing. Admire. Admire. Yeah. yeah there's definitely actually like like. Uh, like um, Justin's glorious glutes, yeah. I, wow. uh, I definitely admire. No, um, here, really, what I admire with the, with you guys, I'll tell you. Um, I admire Justin's ability to uh, just step outside of his comfort zone. I've never met anybody so okay with doing that. You can, I mean, and you can tell he's uncomfortable when he does it. It's not like it's, <laughs> it's not easy at all. <laughs> It's very obvious, yes. But that makes it that's what makes it admirable. Because yeah. if it was if it wasn't I agree. It was easy I, for I think you, that's a, I think I'd hundred percent agree. I've though. never placed myself in positions as uncomfortable as I've seen Adam uh Justin put himself in positions and he almost seems like he seeks it out, which is extremely admirable because um I, I know that doing that is what forces uh growth. And um it's something that since meeting um or, or working with Justin it's something that I've uh, tried to do more of is put myself in situations because I'm very I can be very I can stay in my safe zone very very easily and just avoid things I'm not comfortable with um, uh, and it, it, it becomes a, a, a habit of mine and so now I'm really trying to take myself out of my comfort zone and I'm starting to find that it's really enjoyable to do so you know what I mean like uh, I went on a road trip and I went camping and then we had to kayak without any you know, any direction and not knowing necessarily where we're going to go. Never in a million years would I have done that before. I fucking get anxious doing that shit. And I did it and I forced myself out of my comfort zone. And it was like such a great uh, growth opportunity. Um, Adam, I definitely admire his ability to uh, work a crowd. Um, He can move into a crowd very comfortably and confidently and just uh, be very comfortable with what he's doing. I am comfortable uh, in certain situations, I should say, or I feel like I'm good in certain situations, but not necessarily just walking into a crowd. Adam seems to do it um, with ease, Very seems very comfortable when he does it, so I tend to watch um, in certain circumstances and observe and pick up and learn um, from uh, the techniques that he does that maybe he does very naturally, um, but I watch and try and pick up on those. So I say those are the two that come to my mind first. Yeah. No, I would, I would definitely agree with you about Adam. I think too, with Adam, like 
just his ability to read people and uh, like uh, sort of see their how to meet them and match their their energy and kind of uh, persuade in in not not like a creepy way but persuade them in a certain way that uh, he can get his point across and it, you know it's 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 masterful to see sometimes <laughs> I'm not gonna lie um, but yeah and then Sal just your uh, just your your ability to articulate information uh, for one and, and just like the confidence that you exude um, and that's not like arrogant, you know, I don't know how you do it, but uh, it is something that like, it's contagious. So, you know, I think a lot of myself now, you know, just being around <laughs> you and, uh, and that's not even a bad thing. You know, it's just like, you know, like, why not, you know, why not carry yourself that way? So, you know, I, I do, I, I admire that quite a bit. And, uh, Doug as well, I'm going to include into this, uh, just his, his, his positive attitude while working, like I've never seen anybody work in, in my life. He's just, dealing with he's, us. He's, <laughs> Mr. He's consistent. a soldier. He's yeah, the Iron Man. Consistent. Exactly. He gets the Iron Man award. Yeah, for sure. For mind pump. 100%. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, that's great. You know, it's funny about Sal that you said that, and I, I couldn't agree more. And it's funny because recently, you know, I've t- met a couple people that, that are either close to me or a friend of a friend. And it's funny when I hear some people's perception of him because he because he t- speaks in certainties that when they meet him. I never do. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, dad jokes yeah. are flying today. And, <laughs> and when, uh, because of that, uh, I've actually had a lot of people that were uh, totally surprised by meeting him when I don't think it's surprising at all. I think he's extremely humble, um, an incredible communicator. Uh, of, and a lot of people think that he's going to be this kind of pompous, arrogant type of guy, which is so funny to me because what I find most admirable about him is is his humility, his ability to be so confident, so intelligent, hold a conversation with pretty much anybody in any field uh, and and do that confidently, but not arrogantly. And I think that is such a rare, rare thing. I've met lots of brilliant minds, mm-hmm. lots and lots of intelligent mm-hmm. people in, in the fitness world and outside of the fitness world. And something that is common with most all of them, with that confidence comes this arrogance. So I can understand why some people assume or think that oh he's probably like that because he's really smart and he talks in certainties and he rattles off studies all the time so uh but it's funny to me when they're they're so surprised like man sal is such a really nice humble sweet guy i'm like what did you think he was gonna be like does he (laughs) come off like an asshole on the show because i I think i come off more like the asshole on the show i think sometimes people's perception of us on here because of maybe the roles that we play as far as this team like, I definitely think that each of us, Doug included, you know, we have our point guard, our center, our power forward, or whatever sport you want to compare to. But when you get to know all of us, we have a very good understanding of all the positions and can play them all pretty well. But on the on the show, we tend to gravitate towards our position, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so Sal has this, you know, we have definitely, uh, he has put himself out there as the uh, almost like the center of attention a lot of time, but not because he he needs the center of attention, because we all recognize that he presents our message better than any of us could individually. And I think to me that's one of the most admirable things. That's a lot of a lot of pressure comes with that position to be the one who always speaks up uh, or counters or you know is not afraid to take on any debate or argument, no matter how intelligent the other person is he has this ability to do that and do it confidently without ever wavering uh to me that's incredibly admirable and i think that a lot of people even misunderstand how humble uh he is while he does all that to me i'm always striving to be that way so something that uh, i try and do on a regular basis is uh you know be confident and be humble at the same time, which, you know, we just talked about a question before. Those are almost conflicting goals. Yeah. You know, there is there is definitely a, a, a very fine line that you dance there because most people that are really, really confident flirt with 
uh, borderline arrogance. And then the people that are extremely humble are also quiet as a fucking mouse. So how do you become this person who is outspoken and is not afraid to speak his mind and speak candidly and at the same time, extremely humble? And I think that uh, in my opinion, uh, of all the b- brilliant minds and people and humans I've been around, I think he represents that uh, more than almost anybody I know. Um, I think Justin also has a very quiet, powerful humility about him that I always strive to be. Something that Justin does really well that uh, I think is why we made good partners even before Mind Pump is he represents the side of me that I, I need to be more of, which when I get in a situation... Um, I am, I am quick to talk in a room or uh, that that's a strength of mine, which I always talk about. Your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. And I recognize that. And sometimes I need to shut the fuck up and just sit in the room and listen and observe. And, uh, Justin does this very well. You know, a lot of people think he's quiet or shy sometimes when he's not that at all. In fact, what he's doing is he's observing everybody's body language, their responses, their attitude, and, and he's making his own assessment on this person's character, which also makes us an incredible team because he mentioned before about my ability to read character. A lot of times I'll vocalize that afterwards and I'll be able to get his feedback on the things that he was observing and seeing. And I can rely on it as very accurate because I know that's what the fuck he was doing. He wasn't just sitting in the room twiddling his thumb or engulfed in the conversation that he wasn't paying attention. He was very much so paying attention. He was assessing everything that was going on. So the collaboration of the two of us together to do that uh, becomes very powerful and a, a, another very uh, dangerous uh, um, dynamic between the We're two the of us. Team. Right. <laughs> so so <laughs> just, just so you know. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm always striving to be better about that. I'm trying to be uh, better and more like him in that area. And since Justin did throw Doug in there, I will too. Doug, uh, what is awesome about Doug and what I always try and do is, you know, talk about a guy who 100% knows way the fuck more than any of us in this room about internet marketing, about building a website, about starting a podcast, about recording any video, but yet he listens to the bullshit that we are constantly yelling and arguing with him. And I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could. He's be, a really good dad. I, yeah, he no, is. legit. Well, this is why we, yeah. this is why we call him that For is. Sure. And I, and I recognize that, that, you know, I don't know how I would do if I had three knuckleheads that were that knew nothing really about fitness that were constantly <laughs> well, we want to argue anyway, right? That were, yeah. were constantly arguing with me on what's the best way for us to do things. Wow, does that take a lot of humility? Wow, does that take a lot of self control uh, and discipline? And then for his ability to maneuver uh, with all of us doing that constantly, uh, obviously speaks to a lot of the success that Mind Pump has. So. Uh, again, uh, and that's kind of similar to some of the things that Justin, I think that's something I'm striving to be more like on, on a daily basis. My, my favorite is when Doug lets us go off on our tangents, like we do all the time. So we'll just go off on these ideas and like, we're, and that's what we do really well is we come yeah, up with these idea. random ideas. Yeah. And then Doug will be like, you know, that's a good idea, but what we should probably focus on is on this thing here that we said we were going to focus on. And he's just really cool about it. like, And we're always like, oh, yeah, 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 it's good. But he lets us get it out. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. lets us like verbalize what we're going to verbalize. Well, and he's, to me, I- Doesn't get pissed off, doesn't know. I, I think that one of, the, one of the things that I really appreciated about him when we first all got together was he recognized that part of the, the brilliance or the unique and what was special about the three of us together was allowing that flexibility and freedom. So even if he doesn't always 100% agree with us, he do, he's smart enough and intelligent enough to see that I don't want to su- suppress any of the creativity of allowing that freedom. And so he has this mentality of I'd rather them – you know, give them more latitude and probably make some bad decisions. They're like, like a father figure, right? Kind of mm-hmm. gives you that little bit of room to learn on your own, get burned a couple of times, run into a couple of brick walls to figure out maybe that wasn't best because somebody who tries to control a situation like in ours so much could actually end up suppressing or hindering the, I don't, the dynamic. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work if someone tried to control us. Yeah. <laughs> it just no. wouldn't work. Uh-uh. Loose cannons. But you do have a lot of good ideas, so Thanks. I'll go with it. Everyone now I think we, I want to hear Doug. I want to hear <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear. Do you have Do you have an assessment of of each one of us? Because I think you have the coolest perspective uh, of all of us. Do is there something about each person in this room 
that you admire and that you strive to to apply to your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think some of it's a reflection of what's already been mentioned. I'll start with Justin. Uh, Justin, his sense of humor. I appreciate his uh, spontaneity and his ability to get a really good joke out, or he has an incredible ability to take on different characters and voices and that type mm-hmm. of thing. Which you probably really appreciate because you have a background <laughs> in, in comedy and, and doing things like that too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Wow, and somebody appreciates that. Justin, you do make me laugh a lot, which is great, and I like to laugh. Sal, again, that memory of yours and the ability to express it, I, I think that's one of the things I wish I would do is sometimes just get out of my head and just speak from my heart. And I feel, Sal, one of the things that you do really well is you don't focus on so much how you're saying something, but the message that you're trying to get across. And because of that, you don't get caught up in, okay, am I saying this exactly the right way or whatever the case may be? And it comes out great. And I would say that the same thing applies to you, Adam, as well. The bowl in the china shop thing. Sometimes I feel like I could use some more of that, just that willingness just to be bold and let things fly and not give a rat's ass about what I say so much because, you know, you don't worry about, oh, am I pronouncing all the words right? Am I always <laughs> using the words in the correct context? No, but it doesn't matter. You know, there's many times I could say, oh, Adam, you could say mentality <laughs> instead of mentality <laughs> or whatever else. Uh, I could correct you, but I don't want to do that because, right. number one, it doesn't really matter. And number two is you're out there in the field, you know, you're the one in the game, right? You're expressing yourself. And so I just want you to have free reign with that. So I, I am, I guess you'd say envious. I don't know envious, but I admire, admire, right? I, yeah, I admire all those traits in all of you. Very cool. Cool. All right. Next up is Hope Granger, who is asking, how open do both parties have to be when a guest comes on Mind Pump with conflicting views, such as Lane Norton and the IIFYM? So, and they brought up other examples too of how we've yeah, had guests, me. you know, like Paul Check and how extremely holistic or, you know, that spiritual side. And, you know, how we have guests that come on that we don't necessarily meet eye to eye with on everything. Like, how. I guess how open-minded do we have to be? Do we you have know, to be, or do they have to be? Coming well, here? I, you know, we're we're developing a reputation for um, being uh, great hosts. This is every single person we've interviewed. This is something we take pride in. We don't share this very often, but people will tell us how uh, we're really great hosts because we allow people, we give people the space to be who they are, even if we disagree mm-hmm. with what they're saying. I would argue that this is the thing that we are all probably most proud of if we were to to uh, not also add the forum in there. I think the forum and this are two things uh, outside of off radio that we discuss that uh, we take a lot of pride in uh, what we've built so far and how much we want to continue to grow and better that. The environment that we've built on the forum and then that ability that I, all of us, we all want if I don't care who the guest is, how famous, how well known, whatever, but I want you to know that when you come on Mind Pump, that when you leave, you go like, "Damn, that was the best interview I've ever done." Mm-hmm. Like, and we've mm-hmm. we have received that uh, from a majority, if not all, of our guests, and that to me is something that we all strive. We for. definitely want them to feel comfortable because I mean, they're not going to be able to really convey their true self if they're in a hostile right. environment and situation. And so, yeah, we're definitely. Um, that's our first thought process is like, how can we, um, sort of break this, this barrier that's this front that they're coming in with, even if they, they're coming in with a different view, we want to kind of relate first and, and get, get them to kind of engage and then we'll go from there. You know what? I I'm glad this came up because this was actually on my mind the other day and I've been meaning to get it off my chest and talk about this because we had gotten some feedback in regards to uh, a like recent episode, like, oh, you guys sound like you guys kissed his ass or you sound like this little bit. And sometimes I feel like, I, I, even I feel like that. I listen to it, I'm like, ah, we kind of, oh, man. Yeah. yeah, we kind of feel like we were sucking up. But a lot of that is really trying to make that guest feel comfortable. If I'm going to ask a, a, a guest some really deep personal shit or ask them to share their insecurities or give up information that they've never given up before on a podcast, I sure as shit can't come out 
you know, attacking their personality or being really cold or, you know, I, and if that means I got to lean or towards an IFYM shirt, right. Sucks. right. Yeah. I mean, if it means I got to lean towards kissing their ass a little bit to get them to settle down and be comfortable, I'd rather as a, as a host come off that way a little bit to get my guest to calm the fuck down a little bit, feel comfortable because when you do that, when you compliment somebody that way and you do have dialect like that at the very beginning, they tend to bring that, drop that mm-hmm. guard. And then, then that allows us to get into a much deeper podcast. We, If we have a guest on the show, it doesn't mean we agree with them. It means that in some respect or in some way we respect them. Mm-hmm. So maybe they have a totally conflicting view uh, on fitness, but they uh, have a huge following and they're they're definitely influential. Well, I'll respect that. I'll respect the fact that, like, I'll tell you what. If who's the guy that uh, runs uh, Shreds that started Shreds? Oh, Arvin. Arvin. Oh, Arvin. Arvin. Right. So, shit. Supplements. Stupid. You know the message. The, I'd bring him on the show. It's all crap. But just to talk business. To thank him. you. I respect uh, that he was able to start from nothing and create this brand that got mm-hmm. real popular. He's obviously knows something. And I want guests to know that they could come on the show, and we we may. Uh, debate them. Uh, we may, um, you know, uh, challenge them a little bit, but we respect them. So it's okay if we disagree. And it's, this is life, by the way. Well, a perfect- Lady, you know, this is life. Life is like this. You're going to disagree with people. People are going to disagree with you. Yeah. That's okay. That's fine. If they're not hurting you, they're not stealing from you, then we can discuss things and disagree on things and respect each other's ability to express our opinion. It doesn't mean at the end of it we're going to be like, ooh, I learned, you know, I agree with you or you agree with me. Sometimes that happens. A lot of times it doesn't. And it doesn't fucking matter. Like when Lane came on the show and we talked about artificial sweeteners, I guarantee you I, we, we disagree on that uh, wholeheartedly. We still disagree on that. And we can debate and discuss it all day long. I still respect the guy. I respect him quite a bit. I respect some of the stuff he does. He respects Mind Pump. He's comfortable. He's welcome to be on the show. Paul Check is another individual. Individual Paul Check, I respect tremendously. I've referred to him as the godfather of wellness. Some of the stuff he says goes way over my head. Some of the stuff he says, I'm like, wow, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'll say that to him. And I actually did. I actually tell him, hey, man, uh, some that of the stuff you're saying. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, some of the stuff you're saying sounds crazy. And you're losing a lot of people. And he's going to tell me, well, I don't give a shit. I'm going to say what I want anyway. And I'm gonna be like, cool, I respect that. But there's also listeners who may gain some insight from these differing opinions. What I don't want is I don't want mind pump, and I don't think none of us want this to become this echo chamber Mm-mm. of guests that come on that sound like us all the time. Like, oh, it's confirmation bias. Yeah, Why yeah. the fuck would we want that? Well, I we would never be challenged. Yeah, I, absolutely. And I, and you know, too, like it doesn't have to be. Uh, you know, funny we bring this question up too. And Lane Orange, something recently had happened. I remember uh, we had had Jordan Shallow on the show, and I know Jordan is not a big Lane fan. And I had chimed in and said something that you know, some talking about Lane's views. And some, you know, some of our fans were like, oh, you talk shit about Lane, but then you're all boys. I'm like, listen, because anytime there's nothing, obviously, that I'll say on this show that I would not say to Lane or any other guest their face. This is what we and what we've discussed outside of this podcast. Like, I'm not stupid. This podcast is being aired. Fucking tens of thousands of people are listening to it. If you don't think that, I wouldn't think that that person doesn't. Shh. Yeah, right. Shh. Don't yeah. tell yeah. anybody. Hey, it's like, just between us, guys. Yeah, it's between the and other it, million. People. And it was funny because that someone had messaged that uh, at the same day that we were having dinner with Lane. I'm just like, you have no fucking idea the relationship that any of us have with these guests. And there, a lot of us have, or the, the three of us have, a lot of respect for a lot of these guests, even if we don't agree with all their their values and their views on a lot of things we've had it with the psychedelic talk we we disagree with a lot of guys and we agree with some things we with with uh cannabis we've discussed and had different views with people we've had it with the sugar and the ifym thing with lane like i mean it's gonna happen and i think uh, well to get to gain success you gotta you gotta be a bit of an outlier right you gotta be a bit polarizing and you know a lot of people um, they they want to pin them in that position uh, forever, and they want them to to become this person that represents like this thing. And so I've just noticed like um, you know getting kind of swept into that mentality where you're like you have a you have an opinion about somebody going into something. Every single time I've talked to them, they've changed my mind. Oh, always, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like every guest yeah. is that way. So now I'm just like, well, whatever. We'll see who they really are as a person. 
You know, like that's that's where, where I want to get to uh, when we do these interviews. Well, and I don't think that. Uh, so when it, the question is, you know, how do how open do both parties have to be? I, I think mind pumps extreme. I don't think there is a guest one that somebody could say. If if they're of influence now, mind you, you got to keep in mind that we have somebody who get we have somebody who literally their job is just reading these emails. So we get bombarded with everybody who thinks they should be a guest on Mind Pump, right? So once Mind Pump got to a certain point, like now everybody, anybody and everybody that's trying to start a health and fitness business and they think they have a similar message as we do is asking to be on the show. So obviously not everybody comes on the show. We're looking for people that are going to add value to our audience. And a lot of times it does not have to be similar views as us. Now, of course, we like learning from these people that, you know, where we're doing research or learning or reading about ourselves. And it's like, God, I would love to hear this expert come on and talk even deeper into this topic. But we're most certainly not going to shy away from somebody who has conflicting views as we do. But a lot of times, if it's really strongly conflicted, it could just be really fucking wrong too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, I'm most certainly not going to waste our waste anybody's time by bringing somebody on the show because they've done a good job of marketing themselves and selling themselves well on their ideologies. Mm-hmm. But I know it's not backed by science and it's a bunch of bullshit. And they just you, somebody just wants to have them come on the show because yeah. they know they well, have we may different even have, views than we do. And we may even have them on the show and tell them that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, the people that I can be the most yeah. honest with that I can call out are the ones that I like and the ones that I tend to be friends with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Random people, not so much. So something that we like to do when we have a guest on the show is we like to spend a day with them before the day we record. We, that's ideal. Ideally, you come hang out with us. We have dinner together, have a few drinks. We talk, whatever. Now we're cool. Now we all know and respect each other. Like, okay, we're all cool. Yeah, so I can now, dig a little bit. Now we get on the yeah. podcast and we can fuck with each other a little bit. Like I fuck with Adam and Justin every podcast. Like every single day. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's yeah. all good. Like, right. and, and that's what you get the best, I think, the best information, the best interviews. And um, I, you know, I think we're, I hope we continue to get better at doing that. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Wilsey Poo. <laughs> What are your thoughts on the McGregor Mayweather fight? Oh my goodness! Oh, Justin, your boy. Yeah, McGregor. I think we're all very excited to watch it. Um, Can I tell you, dude, that I'm I'm like I love the shit. Talking. I'm get I do, but I'm getting a little bit sick of it. Uh, they are literally is it going, going too far, bro? They're the shit talking is not going too far. They're scheduling. Yeah, it's uh, the all these events. Is, okay, and all they do is come out. And they have a mic and they talk and they shit to each other shit. in front of a crowd. And it's okay. just—it's becoming a fucking comedy people, show. People are yeah. eating it up. It was cool the first couple well, the times. First, yeah, that's the thing. I've only seen the first few times they did it, and they're still going with that, huh? Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, I can get old. Conor McGregor is one of the most brilliant self promoters I've ever seen in my entire life, yeah. ever. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of the fight sports, uh, boxing, and and, uh, and and MMA. And there's some that were really good. Muhammad Ali was like the, uh, the the freaking guy that really started. He's really the one that kind of wrote the script on how to do this right. And he mm. was brilliant at it. And then you had guys who were kind of shitty at it, like Mike Tyson. I mean, he was so terrifying in the ring. <laughs> your children. And some of the shit that he said, you were just what? like, yeah, I'm going to eat your children. I think you could debate how great he was. I thought he was great, dude. Yeah. I think that was... No, he's just... <laughs> he was ahead of his time. He just yeah. fucking... <laughs> Was he was too much. He was like, it was too much. Like he let out his real feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm gonna well, rape you. Your head. Like you shoot that in your neck. He said <laughs> shit like that. What? Uh, but McGregor's just brilliant at it. Um, he weaseled his way in. Think about this now. He, how many boxers, high level boxers with crazy pedigrees and crazy backgrounds of and win, you know, uh, um, records and whatever, would die, would cut off their arm to get the opportunity to fight Floyd May- Mayweather, who's arguably. Oh, I know. The best boxer ever of our time, That's probably, or piss ever. Them off, yeah. How many of them would love For to sure do that? Way more qualified than McGregor. Yeah. Here you have an MMA guy who's not even the best like striker in MMA. He's good, but he weasels his way into a fucking 
a boxing match well, with the greatest boxer so you, of all time. You know that this That's is fucking he's just a brilliant. walking money machine. This oh my is, god! This and is where Mayweather all sees that. the naysayers and the people that are hating on this are are the purists, right? Like if you're a purist in and you just love the sport of boxing and you look at this like. This is the circus. Yeah, exactly. You get it as a circus, and this is not fair because they know boxing so well that they know the top three contenders, right? Mm -hmm. Who, in their mind, if you're if you're a true boxing fan, isn't it Canelo and and uh, see, I don't even know somebody else. Yeah, had a fight, and it's like you know the best of the best in the world. Oh yeah, no, no publicity. It's uh, what's this? God, damn it! Yeah, that there's there is a epic boxing fight that's supposed to happen. Yeah, that nobody is really talking even. Yeah, it's talking about because it's it's being drowned out by this and so yeah so if you're a purist and you're really into boxing you are a little irritated by this this fight because statistically uh, and realistically i don't think that mcgregor has a fucking chance now if in fighting okay everybody has a chance mm-hmm. one punch one good punch the right time could take somebody out but mayweather is the one of the best if not arguably the best at defense and making sure he well, doesn't get knocked out by some of the best hands. He's a, he's a legend. He yeah, Mayweather sleeps and breathes this for he's a, 20 plus years. He's a fucking legend. He yeah. started boxing at the age of four. Here's the thing people need to understand about, uh, about the fight sports. When you're an MMA fighter and you're the best of the best in MMA, you're usually not the best at one of those attributes. So, like, right. you're not the you best do, boxer, and then you're and you terrible some, at the ground. You do sometimes get like a world champion kickboxer who fights MMA and then kind of does it. But usually, you're just good at, at using them all, using the cage and fighting MMA. Mm-hmm. And I know this because I've trained in, in uh, I'm lucky enough to have trained in uh, kind of one of the hubs of MMA, which is San Jose. We've got some great schools around here. And I've seen some of these like, Top level competitors in, in in MMA go roll with a with a with a, a high level super high level competitive jujitsu guy and just do jujitsu and they get schooled at just jujitsu. Of course, if you throw them in the cage, they kick the crap out of the jujitsu guy because mm-hmm. they're an MMA guy. I've also seen them do this with boxing and kickboxing and wrestling. Like you take the a great MMA guy, have him go do Greco Roman against the gold medalist, they're going to get schooled. So when it comes to that, I mean. I, of course, McGregor's got a chance. Mayweather's older. His hands are, you know, kind of fucked up. And, you know, but I just don't see how. Now you put him in the cage, McGregor's going to beat oh, the crap God. out of him. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. That's not even it close. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's how you look at this is either one of them in their field dominates the other one. Yeah. yeah. McGregor in an MMA cage dominates Mayweather. Oh, ankle May- pick, choke him out. Yeah. Well, so fast. And, and in boxing, it's kind of hard to like create like a, a sort of a surprise punch or you know what I mean like it, it whereas there's so many variables in MMA that he could just spring or like boxing it's consistent like it, you have to you have the skill or you don't right you know it's like it's very obvious and I, I, and I think what we'll see like if if Mayweather comes if uh if McGregor comes in there and for some reason I mean because his, his only chance his only hope in this fight is in the first three to four rounds Everything he's got, right? He's throwing the everything yeah, at him, yeah. haymakers, whatever. And the only way I see this, like even turning into a halfway decent fight, is that's what happens. McGregor comes out swinging like crazy yeah. and actually he punches through his block. I right. think yeah. I think McGregor's going to come out and he's going to get into his karate stance because I think he's going to be very unorthodox or unorthodox. He which, should, yeah. which I think is smart. I think he should do that. He's yeah. going to go lefty because McGre- uh, McGregor can switch. He's a switch fight, so he can go right and left. He's going to go lefty because uh, the only people have ever given Mayweather like serious trouble were lefties. Mm. And uh, he's going to play the kind of counter fight, which is going to be interesting because Mayweather's a he's counter fighter. He's going to move too. all shifty. Right. It, it could turn into an awful like, uh, fight. He's bigger than weird. He's could, a lot bigger than Mayweather. If this it's going to be a weird fight. I'm if this like. goes the distance, I'll be disappointed. And to be honest with you, statistically, the odds are it's going to go the distance. I mean, odds are... Yeah. Well, Mayweather hasn't knocked anybody out in years. Right. Mayweather hasn't knocked anybody out in years. If McGregor has... I don't see him wanting to take a chance either. Exactly. Why would you take a chance to come in close? I'll tell you why. Okay. McGregor... Pride over money and over your record? Well, hold on a second. McGregor has literally <clears throat> nothing to lose with this. If he goes in and loses, that's what everybody said he would happen. Yeah. And all he has to do then is invite Mayweather to the cage to save face and say, okay, I came to your world. Yeah. Now you come to mine. Mayweather has nothing to win. Even if he knocks out McGregor, 
What's it, what's he going to say? He was supposed to. He was. There's nothing. Yeah. He has nothing to win. It is. There. This is pure money. Which Mayweather's going to win on points. It's going to be boring. Uh, well, all that being said, I'm going to put my money on McGregor, not in the sense that I think he's going to win, but because the, the odds. odds are so yeah. fucking crazy. That, oh, I'm, I'm I'm hoping for McGregor all the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put money on him because yeah. if I do win, I'll win some good money off of it. Dude. There's always that which I think lightning he, can strike. I, yeah, yeah, and I think we all agree on that for Vegas reasons that you know putting the money on McGregor just because the odds are crazy. Right now, I just looked at it again right now, and it's like, are they getting worse? No, it's not getting worse. It actually went. To, it did go a little bit in McGregor's favor, a tiny bit, uh, uh, because, because of all he's the such a good shit talker. Yeah, because of all his the, head. Yeah. just a little bit though. I mean, it's. Uh, I think it was plus. What was that with the lift in his shoe? Uh, oh, Mayweather. Mayweather's little little like yeah. His, his oh, I didn't heel see lifts. that. I didn't you didn't see, see that. Yeah. He's wearing like Skechers. Yeah, man. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's it, like gave him like a full inch. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Oh, hilarious. Yeah, uh, I, McGregor to me is just a brilliant, brilliant showman. I can't believe how he got himself a fight with Mayweather. I have no idea. He's yeah. going to make more money in this fight than probably his entire career. It's brilliant. I mean, God, God bless four him. Four years. Mayweather has been he's fighting man, forever. Dude, I love McGregor. In four years, he got this freaking well, opportunity. The, the way you know he's so brilliant is I strongly believe this is going to be a boring fight. I strongly believe that it's obvious how it's going to play out, and I still will watch it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's how good. That's I'm how, excited for right, it. Right, and I'm excited for it. Like, yeah. just because yeah. maybe, you know, yeah. just maybe. So if you're <laughs> just him to... stepping in and being like, ah, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and fuck you, Showtime owner. Ah, <laughs> asshole. So if you're, Mag- if you're McGregor, what's your, what do you think your strategy is going into this? Not that pay, any of us are fighting. Hey, hey, just talk shit all day. In yeah. there, you go in and you, like you said, I like the stance idea, create some angles on him, but throw in haymakers and hope to God you catch yeah. one. So here's what He's I... He's going to try and bait him in. Just blah, you so pussy again. Here, yeah. Here's what I... Yes, yeah. 100%. If I'm McGregor... Just my, bait him all day. My ah. entire goal is to make a show. Mm-hmm. It's not to win. It's no. to make a show. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie him up when shit gets dangerous because McGregor can tie him up very well. Remember, he knows how to grapple. You can't Uh, clinch, right? You can clinch. You can? Well, in boxing, you can definitely tie people up. (laughs) You can get a point taken away from doing it too much. You can't grab behind the neck, though, right? No, 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 no. no. But he can can tie him up. It's different, though. (laughs) So that's different. So I would do that as a defense. And then if shit gets real hairy, I, I get pissed off and throw a kick. And fucking hit him with a kick, <laughs> get disqualified, and now yeah. everybody, now like everybody's that. gonna fucking pay yeah. to watch the rematch. Just DQ'd, yeah. I would not put Just it past head kick him exactly. I would oh, not put it past amazing. or take him down. Yeah. You know, like Just if, tackle him and yeah, then like punch him once. Think about it. You're getting your ass kicked. Dude, you're right. I can see this. You're happening. getting your ass kicked, yeah. and then he shoots on him and fucking yeah. slams him. Gets disqualified or gets a I point mean, taken. Talk he about care. talk about taking a page out of the Mike Tyson biting the ear off a of Hollyfield. Yeah. I mean, it will turn into one of the biggest greatest spectacles ever if he were to everybody like half the people just I like I like where your head's at. I yeah. like and all he has that. to do afterwards and be like, "That's my instinct. I, I was hey, in a fight. Sorry, I'm in a man. fight. I can't yeah. take away my yeah. tools. I'm a fighter, you know." And everybody's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I want to watch the rematch." Oh, can you bet on him getting DQ'd? I would. That's I a would, great. I one. would for sure do that. In Throwing Ve- a kick in, or something. In, in Vegas, you can on uh, sports booking stuff. You might not oh, be able I to just give everybody that idea. They oh, have. Yeah. They have. A, like yeah, when you go to Vegas, you can. They have a line for everything, dude. dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You you can you can bet on if they're gonna touch gloves. That's the money the one right You can there. do all kinds of crazy yeah. shit like that. Yeah, oh, excellent! Sure. Yeah. I'll be betting some money then for sure. <laughs> so check this out. Go to YouTube. Subscribe to Mind Pump TV. We post new videos every single day. In fact, we posted our. Very first instructional webinar. Prime Pro. Where we actually... Prime Pro, Prime Pro. We actually go through Prime Pro. In other words, it's not an infomercial. We literally go through the program and teach you some of it. And it's free and it's available on YouTube. Uh, our, our channel, of course, is uh, Mind Pump TV. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on episodes like this one, the place to do it is on Instagram. Our page is Mind Pump Media. We also have personal pages where we go over fitness in our own special ways. Justin's page is Mind Pump Justin. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Doug is Mind Pump Doug. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee 
And you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.